The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strong to lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The Gold Star Bar was the gayest spot in Whitehorse. At a corner table in the smoke-filled, noisy room, a bearded man looked up as Molly, one of the cafe entertainers, slipped into a chair beside him. Keith, how did you get here? Quiet. Not so loud. I escaped. Been on my way up here for weeks. Thought I'd find you here. Are they... are they after you? <laughs> what do you think? But that big prison, I don't see how you got out. Two of us made the break. They got Pierce. I got away. But what are you going to do? I'm heading north tomorrow. And you're coming with me. You got money, ain't you? Yes, some. But where can we go? We'll go to Selkirk, then head west and get across the border into Alaska. You got enough money to buy a dog team? No. No, not that much. Anyway, we couldn't buy one here. People are talk. Yeah, I guess you're right. We'll have to carry packs. Think you're strong enough? Oh, I've waited over a year for you. I thought I'd have to wait till. Oh, I'll make it, Pete. Somehow. Nobody knows we're married, so the law won't be watching you. Can I hide out in your room tonight? Sure. Sure you can, Pete. And tomorrow I'll buy the supplies. We can leave tomorrow night. Inspector Grayson at the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson looked very serious as he talked to Sergeant Preston. King, the sergeant's huge husky dog, lay at the Mounties' feet. Pete Hill is a killer, Sergeant. He killed a prison guard, and as you know, Corporal Green of the Northwest Mounted. If he sees you first, he'll try to kill you. Especially since you were responsible for his going to jail. He threatened me then, but they all do that. A man answering his description was seen heading north from British Columbia. I don't know why he'd be coming up here again, but keep your eyes open for him. I'll do that, sir. <clears throat> I'm leaving for Selkirk in the morning. I'll go on the white horse from there. Pete, I I'm tired. Let's make camp now. Can't stop now. If we keep walking, we'll get far enough today to make Selkirk by tomorrow night. But this pack is so heavy. Uh, I don't know why I bothered with you anyway. I could have made twice as good time by myself. Pete, I keep wondering, why are you coming way up here anyway? We could have cut straight west, I should think. Because I wanted to come up here. Before I go across the border, I got a score to settle. A score to settle? What do you mean? You might as well know now as later. I'm hoping to run into a certain Mountie up here, Sergeant Preston. A Mountie? But Pete, he'll arrest you. He'll take you back to prison. Oh, no, he will. Not this time. Because I'm getting even for every minute I spent in that jail. Oh, Pete, if you kill a Mountie, they'll never stop hunting for you. you. You can't. All right, I'm letting you in on it then. I already did kill a Mountie in British Columbia. Just after I got out. He tried to get me and I let him have it. You... You mean you're a murderer? Oh, Pete. He wasn't the first one. And he ain't gonna be the last. Oh, oh, oh. Molly, what's wrong? My, my ankle. I, I twisted it. Oh, oh, it hurt. Let me see. Now, wait. I'll loosen your boot for you. Wait a minute. Oh. There. Can you, can you move it at all? Yes. But it, it hurts. Of all the rotten luck. Oh. Now, what do we do? We're almost out of supplies. And here we are stuck out here in the wilderness. I, I, I'm sorry, Pete. Yeah, we'll have to make camp now, I suppose. I'll carry you back off the trail. Oh. Oh. Maybe you'll be able to walk on it tomorrow. How do you feel, Molly? Your foot better? It hurt all last night. 
I'm afraid I can't walk. Come on, step on it hard. You just imagine it hurts. Oh, no, Pete. I... Oh, I can't do it. It's no use, I tell you. What do we do? We can't sit here and starve till your foot's better. Well, maybe you could go to Selkirk and get help. Yeah. Maybe I could get a dog team and supplies and come back after you. Pete, you, you will come back. You wouldn't just leave me here. Sure I'd come back. What do you take me for? Do you think you could get along all right? Well, if you'd cut enough wood and leave it where I could reach it, leave enough food. It'd take a day or two. You'd probably be scared. Well, there's nothing else we can do. You better start. There isn't much daylight this time of year. Yeah. Yeah, I better get going. Darkness had fallen, but Sergeant Preston continued on his way along the trail from Selkirk to Whitehorse. Suddenly, his lead dog, King, stopped up ahead. Whoa! Hi, Huskies! What is it, boy? What's the matter? Oh, those are only timber wolves, fella. Well, I wonder if you can hear something I can't. All right, King. Go ahead, boy. Find it. Molly crouched in the small shelter of boughs that Pete had made for her. Her face, white and terror-stricken, was lighted by the small fire that burned before her. The fire was also reflected in two pairs of eyes that shone like fiery coals from the thickets nearby. With a hand that shook with fear, Molly put the last piece of wood on the dying fire. Then, slowly, one pair of eyes crept closer. The huge form of the wolf stopped for a moment, its body black against the snow, its eyes gleaming. Then, again, it started forward. Molly covered her face with her arms as she saw it crouch for the spring. But at that moment, another gray form sprang from the darkness and rolled in a snarling heap with a huge wolf. See, boy, you hurt much. Yeah, a couple of nasty slashes, didn't you, oh, fellow? Yes, he hurt. Oh, he'll be all right in a few days. How do you happen to be out here all alone? Oh, I, I sprained my ankle. Or I, I broke it. My husband had to leave me here. He went to Selkirk for help. Something must have happened to him. You mean he didn't come back when he said he would? No. I, I've been here a long time. He should have been back. I had no more wood or food. Was your ankle any better? I can't walk on it. I couldn't get more wood. I'll, uh, I'll get my sled and take you to Jed Raymond's cabin. That's where I was headed when King stopped on the trail. He must have heard you. Oh, I owe my life to that dog. When I think what might have happened if he hadn't come... Well, don't think about it. we better get to Jed's cabin as soon as we can. It's good to be warm again. How's your ankle feel? I can walk since you bandaged it. Well, it doesn't look as if Jed will be back. Guess I better go out and cut some wood for this fire. We're running low. Will you be gone long? Oh, not very. Uh, oh, I don't wonder that you're nervous after the experience you've had. But don't worry, I'll leave King with you. You'll feel safe enough then. Oh, yes. If King is here, I won't be afraid. Well, I'll get going. <laughs> no, you stay here, fella. I won't be away long. I think you'll be able to walk on that foot now. <laughs> Come here, King. He'll be back soon. Lie down here beside me, fella. Hello, Molly. Pete, how did you get here? Quiet, King. I heard in Selkirk that Preston was headed this way. That's why I came back. To get him. So you didn't intend to come back for me. That's why you were away so long. Why, no, no, Molly, I didn't mean that. The I... only reason you wanted me with you was because I had the money for the supplies. You were going to keep it and then go on without oh, me. Oh, quit yapping. I ain't got time to argue with you. <coughs> and that dog don't seem to like me. Make him lie down in the corner. King. King, good boy. 
Lie down, Phelps. Pete, what are you going to do? I don't like that dog. First thing I'm going to do is shoot him right between the eyes. No, Pete, I won't let Why you... Get away. Get away. Stop him. Oh, he's got my hand. Take him off. I've got your gun, Pete. Oh. Now, get up. Get up and sit in that chair. Watch him, King. You lost mine? Sit down in that chair, Pete. And don't move. Jumping me just when I was going to shoot. Are you crazy? This dog saved my life, Pete. Maybe I just wanted to return the favor. Yeah, but Molly, I'm your husband. Give me that gun before that Molly comes back. You're a murderer. And now you want to kill again. It's a question of him or me, ain't it? Molly, I come back, didn't I? I trailed you to this cabin. When I saw him leave, I came in to see if you were here. You came in because you knew it would be easier to kill him inside. He wouldn't no, suspect No, no, listen, honey. Give me the gun and I'll go. You've always been on my side. You've always been crazy about me. You can't let me be taken by the law now. Give me the gun. Oh, Pete. Why did you have to kill people? They were after me, I tell you. It was self-defense. Molly, you know I always loved you. You can't do this to me. I'm your husband. You're a rat and a killer. You left me. You weren't coming back at all. You just wanted to kill Brad. That's not true. It ain't true. I come back to get you. When you weren't there, I trailed you. That's not what you said first. Well, I was excited. Didn't know what I was saying. Give me the gun, honey. I'll go. I'll meet you in Sunkirk. We'll get across the border and start all over. I promise you I won't kill anybody. Please, Molly. I... I wish I could believe you. They'll hang me, Molly. It'll be your fault. You'll think of it the rest of your life. Oh, no. You... Pete, stop it. Give me the gun, honey. Everything will be all right. I'll meet you in Selkirk at the Gold Horseshoe. Hurry, Molly, before it's too late. Will you promise that you won't shoot this dog? Sure, I'll promise, Sure. Come on. Give me the gun. Oh, I don't trust you, Pete. But I, I can't see you hanged. I'm going to let the dog out first, so you can't kill him. Then I'll give you the gun, and you can go. All right, Molly. Anything you say, but hurry. Come on, King. Get Preston, boy. All right, King. Go out. Go to Preston. Now, give me the gun, Molly. I don't think I should. I can't go out through the woods unarmed. Give it to me. All right. Here. Now go. And I'll meet you in Selkirk. Now get back in that corner. Please, you get please. back, I said, and don't move, yell, or I'll let you have it. You lied to me. You aren't going. <laughs> I told you I was going to get Preston, didn't I? Well, I'm getting him. Why did I ever believe you? You're a liar and a murderer. You didn't come back for me at all. <laughs> no, maybe I didn't. <laughs> But I'm drilling that Mountie when he comes through the door. And if you squawk, you'll get it right afterwards. Pete, I, I can't believe it. Quiet. Oh, quiet. Listen. Yeah, he's coming. Not a sound out of you. What's wrong with you, fella? <coughs> you little fool, that lamp. Get in, Ken. Oh, get back up. Stop. Take him off. Oh, Hold him, him fella. Hold him. Watch him. Now, where's the candle? There's oh. one on the shelf. Let me up. Take this dog away. Get him off me. Oh, there we are. Sergeant, are you hurt? Well, the bullet just grazed my shoulder. All right, King, back, fella. Why, why, it's Pete Hill. Get up, you. Take this dog away. Thanks, Molly, for breaking that lamp. You saved my life. You little fool, I should have run your neck for That'll do, Pete. You're under arrest. Yeah, if it hadn't been for that dog, you'd never have got me. Never in a million years. That he dog saved the both of thing. us. Never would Pete would have killed me, too. Thanks, old fella. You've done a real job tonight. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>